Tomorrow it looks like horror to you, it doesn't matter, you stick to it. It feels like hell, you stick to it. That's well-being. So, you want to be there? Be there, no problem. You want to be here? Be here. When it comes to body and mind, we're all differently capable. No two bodies are equally capable. No two minds are equally capable. Don't go on changing your mind every day, morning one way, evening another way. You are a torture to yourself and everybody around you. If you keep shifting, nothing happens. If you have to know the energy, right now it's concentrated in the form of this body, only if you use it in a certain way, it'll crackle. Otherwise, it'll sit like a lump of earth. I would say, more than ninety-five, actually I think it's ninety-nine but so that I'm not wrong, at least ninety-five percent of the human energy is waste… is simply wasted because most human beings cannot hold anything in their focus for any substantial amount of time. The only reason most of the humanity goes about their life, blundering through their life, not knowing which way to go, is because they keep shifting the direction of their life too often. According to a report by CNBC, 51% of young Americans feel lost in life. Until the moment you are devoid of clarity, you cannot stick to a single direction. Let's hear what Sadhguru says on this matter. Whatever you wish to do, you must bring yourself to moment of joy and clarity within yourself. At that moment what you decide, even if you die, you must go by that. Whenever your emotions go up and down, your mind says many things, that's not important. It says one thing today, one thing in the morning, one thing in the evening. It says one thing today and another thing tomorrow. That's of no consequence. In the moment of clarity, when I'm saying joy because when you're happy, you're not compulsive. When you're very happy and clear, at that time, if you look at things and see, that, yes, this is what is more sensible for me, just do that. It doesn't matter if it feels like hell. It doesn't matter. You go through hell for ten years, it doesn't matter, you just do that because that's where your well-being is. Every day when your thoughts and emotions fly this way and that way, you keep changing your mind, changing your mind, changing your mind, you will go in circles, endlessly in circles. Because one who changes direction too often obviously is not interested in going anywhere, isn't it? You know, this is… Uh, the world is round, so which direction you go, it doesn't matter. As long as you go without changing direction, you'll make the journey, isn't it? You'll complete the journey, isn't it? If you change your direction, it'll put you into an endless… state of being lost, always lost. So, you want to be there? Be there, no problem. You want to be here? Be here. Don't go on changing your mind every day, morning one way, evening another way. 
you are a torture to yourself and everybody around you. When you are in different states of compulsiveness, if you make decisions as to which way to turn, you will be endlessly lost. It is not about what you are doing, it is just that you are doing it in, in an unwavering way. Every day you are off and on, off and on, doesn't happen. You just unwavering, you become unpointed. It doesn't matter what it is. If you want to be a butcher, be a butcher in an unwavering way, it will open up. Just not wavering for a moment, what you have decided in a moment of clarity and joy, just sticking onto it without wavering a little bit, nobody can deny it to you. One who is constantly changing their mind is a torture to the himself and to everyone around, isn't it so? In the… right now you're thinking tomorrow morning, I'm going to do my yoga. Tomorrow morning when the dawn <laughs> at five o'clock in the morning, I hear it every day, I don't know how many of you hear it. <laughs> the moment it goes down, maybe we should beat a drum. <laughs> then your body says, to hell with this yoga, all I want to… It keeps changing, its priorities keep changing and changing and changing. This so-called getting civilized has become a huge detriment for spiritual <laughs> process. Not essentially, but I would like to say this. <laughs> because uh, if… if you were a nomad, you know nomad means what? That, ne that means you are not mad. So who is not a nomad? One who is mad. One who is mad settles down. One who is not mad moves on and on and on, doesn't settle down anywhere. There is another way to live. Where the biggest joys that you have known in your life, the greatest pleasures that you have known in your life will look like, you know, will look like ant's pleasure. This being is capable of that. When it… when it comes to body and mind, we're all differently capable. No two bodies are equally capable, no two minds are equally capable. But when it comes to this being, every being is equally capable of containing the very existence within himself. Scientists are saying it's ever-expanding. How to contain it? That's the whole beauty of it. That which is endless, that which is eternal, that which is boundless and that which is always expanding, that can be contained in this being. About that, no two beings are differently capable. Every being is equally capable. It doesn't happen because you keep changing direction. Wherever you find a little niche which is comfortable, you try to settle down there. So if all you're looking for a picnic is a picnic, then it's okay. You know, it feels like that when we… if you want to try to climb the seventh hill, you climb a certain distance, where your knees will be creaking and your breath will be looking like a 
you know, a steam locomotive, push, 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 it's going. Then you look around and the bamboo, the beautiful rocks, the bamboo around you and everything is so wonderful, the valley is so beautiful. What is the purpose of taking one more step? This is wonderful, this is it. Your mind tells you, this is it. The moment we stopped being nomadic, we got into a certain kind of madness of safety and security. Whether it's physical, psychological or emotional, we're always looking for that niche where we can settle down and sleep. And once you find a niche and it gets too sweet and comfortable, and you don't have the courage to step out and once again make the journey. It's… I'm not questioning the beauty of the place. I'm not questioning the pleasure of being there. But right now, this argument has come, this new level of logic has come in you simply because your lungs are working like a steam engine and your legs are creaking like an unoiled bullock cart. So, new logic will come. Do you see every time for different situations that you get into, different states of comfort or discomfort you get into, you develop a new logic? Have you noticed this with yourself? According to new situations, different levels of comfort or discomfort, new levels of logic will come. The world has come to a point where the Maoists have become capitalist, that's it. <laughs> that is it, you know. <laughs> like they say, when you are a student, everybody is a communist. The moment you come out of your education and get yourself a job, you become a socialist. The moment you get married, you become a capitalist. <laughs> so, it keeps happening. That's why in a certain moment of clarity and joy when you are there, you look at something, what you see is your well-being, you stick to that. Tomorrow it looks like horror to you, it doesn't matter, you stick to it. It feels like hell, you stick to it. That's well-being. If you keep shifting, nothing happens. Nischala Tattva Jivan Mukti means for one who is unwavering in his intention, for him, Liberation cannot be denied. The only reason most of the humanity goes about their life, blundering through their life, not knowing which way to go, is because they keep shifting the direction of their life too often. They may not actually change the direction of their life, but in their mind and emotion, it keeps shifting and shifting and shifting and shifting. If you have to know the energy, right now it's concentrated in the form of this body, only if you use it in a certain way, it'll crackle. Otherwise it'll sit like a lump of earth. If this has to sit here and crackle, then it has to be kept in a certain way. So whatever the physical sadhana that you're doing is not to build muscle, not to <laughs> that when you go home you can dominate the people at home. <laughs> I'm telling the ladies, <laughs> you could be stronger than them. <laughs> Ninety days of sadhana, you could be actually stronger than <laughs> The very nature of the existence, 
is such today it is also a scientific fact but this is the experience of every yogi that in this existence there is energy and this consciousness there is no such thing as physical matter physical matter as you know it today is just concentrated patterns of energy today this is established science but more than 40000 years ago when shiva spoke he spoke clearly his involvement was in absolute consciousness or in the energy never in the physical matter because he did not see it as real and he spoke thus very clearly without any ambiguity about it so these are the only two things one needs to deal with oh why didn't you tell us <laughs> we wouldn't have done the surya namaskar today mom <laughs> you are not doing the surya namaskar to build muscle i would say more than 95 actually i think it's 99 but so that i am not wrong at least 95% of the human energy is wasted is simply wasted because most human beings cannot hold anything in their focus for any substantial amount of time otherwise each of them would be opening up a new window a new door to something else 7 billion people if they had all had their minds and consciousness focused everything just everything have to yield nothing would be unexplored just everything if your energies can crackle and your mind is focused then this will just build in that direction because the mind is shifting and shifting and shifting focus it does not know which way to build the very life within you is confused it doesn't know which way to go if one keeps his mind his energies and his consciousness organized in one direction for a certain period of time he not only realizes the nature of this life the past 84 creations that have happened they are also here everything could be explored by human consciousness concluding the wonderful talk of sad guru Just remember if you have unwavering attention and intention you can achieve anything in your life if you keep shifting your priorities depending upon your emotions you won't reach anywhere in your life click on the video shown on the screen to see more from us what would you like to see in the next video share your thoughts in the comments section like share and subscribe to our channel thanks for watching